Welcome back to Harbour Boxed. That's right, Harbour Boxed in commemoration of YouTube naming our channel Harbour Boxed in the auto caption system. We have this brand new merch available for a limited time only. I reckon it looks yeah, pretty awesome if it's available in t-shirts and hoodies, uh, but it can only be bought for the next two weeks. That's it. So if you are interested, links are in the description below, and it is a great way to support us here at Harbour Box to make all the videos and reviews that you're enjoying on the channel. So yeah, I guess that's the shameless self-promotion over. Let's get into the monitor review that we're going to be going through today. Something I yeah, haven't done on the channel for a little while now, but Monitors are a bit piling up in my office, ready for testing, so I think this one needs to get done. Today's review is of the LG 27GN750, which is one that I was particularly excited to receive. Many people following our monitor reviews will be aware of the LG 27G850, which was the first of LG's one millisecond class IPS gaming displays. Now. It couldn't actually hit a one millisecond greater gray average with usable overdrive settings, but thanks to LG's improvements to their IPS LCD technology, it was still the fastest 1440p IPS display on the market and a great buy for gamers. Well, the 27GN750 is using the same one millisecond class IPS technology, but bringing it to a new panel type. Instead of being found in a 27 inch 1440p 144Hz display, the 27GN750 brings a one millisecond rated response time to a 27 inch 1080p 240Hz panel. This gives us another option in the high end 1080p monitor market and one that, thanks to IPS, could be a really compelling buy. It's not the first 1080p 240Hz IPS monitor that I've reviewed though, that goes to the MSI MAG251RX, which is a smaller 24 inch design and uses a panel from AU Optronics. And to be honest, it performs really well, easily offering fast enough response times to keep up with the 240Hz refresh rate. So LG has their work cut out for them to offer a great super high refresh experience here, even with their known quality IPS technology. Aside from the main specs that we've been talking about, LG offers a fairly typical experience here, which includes G-Sync compatibility, aka Adaptive Sync, so this monitor works flawlessly with both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. LG also touts HDR10 support, no VESA display HDR certification here, so this is a bit of a worthless inclusion. That's mostly because this is just an sRGB display, 99% according to LG's website, but nevertheless, unlike the 27GL850, it doesn't pack in a wide gamut. The 27GN750 is also priced quite competitively at just $400 US, which is typical of LG's current monitor lineup. This makes it cheaper than the ViewSonic XG270 and Acer XV273X, and around the same price as ASUS's attractive VG279QM, which I'm hoping to review soon. LG isn't in the outright lead here in terms of price, but luckily there are no red flags popping up just yet. As for the design, LG is sticking with their tried and true formula that they've been using throughout their Ultra Gear line for the last few years. I quite like it from a visual standpoint, it's not the most premium construction as what you're getting is mostly plastic, but I think the simplistic black aesthetic with a few red highlights looks quite nice. Nothing crazy going on here, the focus is purely on that IPS display with decently slim bezels. There are some neat features here including height, tilt and pivot support, plus very easily accessible ports on the rear. LG doesn't tuck these away behind a plastic flap or along the bottom, they're just straight on the back and easy to access. Two HDMI and a display port here, plus a USB hub and audio output, no built-in speakers here. My only real concern with the design is the stand is a bit wobbly for my liking, nothing outrageous, but the connection between the stand pillar and the legs isn't great, so it does have the opportunity to rock around slightly. A non-issue if you're not touching the monitor, but it does feel a bit cheaper than I was expecting. The on-screen display, as with most Ultra Gear monitors, is controlled through a directional toggle along the bottom edge of the screen. I quite like LG's OSD layout, it's easy to navigate, has all the relevant information viewable at a glance. There aren't a ton of crazy features in here, there's a few crosshairs, black modes and so on, but it's quick and it's well put together. One question that tends to bob up when reviewing high refresh monitors like this is, do you really need 240Hz and is it an upgrade over 144Hz? Well, having reviewed a few 240Hz monitors lately, I'm becoming more accustomed to the improvements in clarity and motion handling the 240Hz provides over 144Hz. So to me, I'd say there is definitely improvement. Not as much as the gain from say 60 hertz to 144 hertz but playing games on a 240 hertz display like this feels extremely responsive and you could even say the same for desktop applications 
Of course, in most circumstances, you will need a powerful PC to hit 200 plus FPS at 1080p in many titles, so make sure that you have a fast CPU in particular to avoid CPU bottlenecks to get the most out of this sort of monitor. One other thing to mention, and I'm sure this has appeared in the comments, is the pixel density of this monitor. 27 inches of screen real estate, but just a 1080p resolution isn't the highest resolution or sharpest experience going around. And I tend to feel 27 inches is slightly too large for a 1080p monitor these days. I tend to prefer more around that 24 to 25 inch size at this resolution. It's not bad for gaming or anything like that, especially when the refresh rate is so high. But for general desktop use like web browsing, I feel the pixel density and resolution is a bit of a constraint. Now let's take a look at the all important response time information, starting with the four main overdrive modes included. At 240Hz, the off mode does reveal quite decent stock response time numbers for this IPS panel with a 6.1 millisecond grey to grey average. This is faster than a lot of IPS panels with overdrive, so yeah, we're off to a good start. The normal mode manages to improve performance quite nicely over the off mode with no appreciable increase to overshoot. A 4.42 millisecond grey to grey average is good, allowing for 82% of transitions to fall within a reasonable tolerance of the refresh window. I think a lot of people will be happy with this mode, but we can do one better. Using the fast mode, we get a marginal improvement to a 3.79 millisecond greater grade average, still with no significant gains to overshoot, so this is the best mode to use for high refresh 240Hz gaming. With 95% of transitions complying with the 240Hz refresh rate, what we're left with is an IPS monitor that is truly capable of refreshing at 240Hz with a 1080p resolution. Like most of LG's recent 1 millisecond class monitors, they essentially cheat to list this as a 1 millisecond monitor. I was able to achieve a 1.9 millisecond greater grade average using the faster overdrive mode, with some transitions below 1 millisecond. The level of overshoot here though is very high, with an average error of 38%, and with 55% of transitions exhibiting serious inverse ghosting. Despite hitting 1 milliseconds or thereabouts, this mode is unusable due to the bright trails it produces in practice. So now we know that the fast mode is the best to extract maximum performance at the highest refresh rate allowed, but which mode is the best to use throughout the refresh range? After all, this is an adaptive sync monitor, so refresh rates will fluctuate in games and could sit in different ranges depending on what you're playing. Having consistent good performance across the refresh rate range is important to account for this. Flicking through the fast mode shows that overshoot begins to become apparent at around 144Hz. It's not terrible at this stage or anything, but when delivering a 3.78 millisecond greater grade average at this refresh, a bit of overshoot creeps in. The monitor still performs well at 120Hz, but it's at 100Hz where we start to see noticeable inverse ghosting. Performance remains fairly consistent in the fast mode at just below a 4 millisecond response time average, but 120Hz is around the usable limit for this mode. Below that, at 85Hz, 60Hz for example, inverse ghosting is noticeable, so I'd no longer recommend this mode for lower refresh rates. However, the normal mode performs really well across the entire refresh range. Even at 240Hz, we're still getting a 4.4 millisecond greater grade average, which is just 17% slower than the fast mode. But with the normal mode, overshoot only becomes noticeable at around 85Hz, not 144Hz, and even at 60Hz, inverse ghosting isn't much of an issue. Meanwhile, response times fall between 4 and 4.5 milliseconds for the most part, which is great for an IPS display. This leads me to make two main recommendations for gaming with the 27GN750. If you'll be playing mostly at high refresh rates, above 144Hz in competitive shooters and that sort of thing, I'd use the fast overdrive mode. If you want to game at lower refresh rates or want a single mode that handles the entire adaptive sync range the best, I'd stick to normal. How does the 27GN750 stack up to other 1080p and high refresh panels? Looking at peak performance, so best overdrive mode for the highest refresh rate, LG's new fast IPS offering holds up well. It's faster than a TN monitor like the Pixio PX5 and also manages to slightly outperform the 27GL850. However, it doesn't quite deliver the same performance as the current generation of 0.5 millisecond class TN panels like you get in Gigabyte's Aorus KD25F. Here the KD25F is about 20% faster with the same excellent overshoot handling. One of the bigger battles is between the 27GN750 and the MSI MAG251RX, the two 240Hz IPS monitors that I've tested, one with an LG 27-inch panel and the other with a 24-incher from AU Optronics. 
With this peak performance chart, there's no clear winner here. The MSI monitor is 18% faster, but comes with higher levels of inverse ghosting. Looking at these two monitors across the refresh rate range, and what's interesting to me is to find that LG's IPS panel is only slightly faster than AU Optronics equivalent. When looking at the normal mode with the LG monitor versus fast with the MSI monitor, in those middle refresh rates, the 27GN 750 only ends up 5% faster with slightly better overshoot handling. It is, however, superior at higher and lower refresh rates, so the 27GN 750 is somewhat faster when comparing these two modes. LG does have a slight advantage in that its quicker overdrive mode, in this case fast, is better than MSI's mode called faster. MSI does hit 3.2-ish milliseconds at 240Hz using this mode as we saw previously, but it's totally unusable at 144Hz. LG's equivalent is a bit slower at 240Hz, but easily usable down to 120Hz. In my opinion, this makes the LG option better for high refresh rate gaming while making use of adaptive sync. So overall, AU Optronics does offer a good IPS panel here for 240Hz. However, LG's technology appears to be somewhat superior. Back to the overall comparison charts. Dark level performance is a non-issue with the 27GN 750. MSI's offering is a bit better tweaked in this region, but there's no dark level smearing here. We also see great response time compliance for the maximum refresh rate at above 90%, so don't be concerned about IPS not being good enough for 240Hz. This latest generation is definitely good enough. Average error rates are kept nicely in check, even using the fast mode at 240Hz. And like I talked about earlier, this is one area where the MSI MAG251RX did suffer a bit. However, MSI's monitor is faster at 60Hz, although you'd think 60Hz would not be used very often on such a high refresh display. Input latency is a non-issue with the 27GN 750, with a processing delay below 0.5 milliseconds and total lag in the chain around the 6 millisecond mark. This is a very responsive display that feels quick to use in all regards. It's just got one of those great combinations of low input lag, high refresh rate, and good response times. Power consumption is average, nothing interesting to highlight here either way. This is just your standard 27-inch display in terms of energy efficiency. One major feature that LG does not provide with the 27GN 750 is any form of backlight strobing for blur reduction, so it's similar in this regard to the 27GL850. MSI's MAG251RX and other options on the market like the ASUS VG279QM do include backlight strobing, so for those that want this feature, LG's option may not be the best. I'm not sure why this is the case, seems like a missed opportunity from LG. Let's move into color performance now, and there's nothing overly special going on here given this is an sRGB only display with no wide gamut support, and despite being advertised as HDR10 capable, it's not really HDR either, so don't expect any true HDR functionality. With that said, a 99% sRGB IPS display can still look fantastic, so let's see what we're working with here. This is how the 27GN 750 performs in terms of default out of the box performance. Do note here that for this review and all reviews moving forward, we are switching to a new Delta E formula, Delta E ITP instead of Delta E 2000, because DE ITP is the new industry standard. We'll show DE 2000 results here as well, so you can compare it to other reviews, but DE ITP is a more sensitive and in some ways better metric, so these new Delta E figures tend to be larger. The formula is specifically designed to better handle modern displays like those with wide color gamuts, but the basics remain the same. A one Delta E difference is meant to be perceptible by the human eye, and anything below a Delta E of two to three is generally considered accurate. My unit did have a slight pink tone out of the box, but nothing crazy. The CCT average curve is reasonably good, but there are some issues with low gamma, as you can see in the gamma curve. This leads to high Delta E performance in those upper mid-tones, so it's not a particularly accurate display out of the box for grayscale. With an incorrect white point, these errors continue into our color tests like saturation. A Delta E of 9.35 is quite high using the new ITP metric, but even under the old formula, we're still looking at performance that isn't fully accurate. We end up with an average performance for a gaming display. Nothing much new in the color checker tests either. These are average results. There are two main issues with performance and we can correct one of them in the OSD and that's the white point with some tweaks that you can see here. However, the gamma curve problems we saw earlier can't be fixed as easily, which is why when we look at grayscale performance, we still end up with a Delta E above 3.0. Not a terrible result, and it's more accurate than it was before, but it's not perfect. Similar story throughout the color tests, improved performance, but not by enough to make this an accurate display. 
However, it is possible to achieve a decent level of accuracy through a full calibration, which we performed using DisplayCal. The gamma curve is mostly resolved now, leading to a delta E of 2.05, which is very solid, only let down by dark performance. In terms of saturation, we end up with a sub 2.0 delta E, and in color checker, around a 2.27 delta E average, which is a great result for a gaming monitor. Like a lot of IPS displays, the 27GN750 responds well to calibration, and you can end up with a really nice looking monitor. Peak brightness is average at around 350 nits after calibration, which is fine for most viewing conditions. As for contrast, well, this is one area that LG's 1 millisecond class IPS panels have struggled with. The 27GL850 is a particularly poor result. The 27GN750 isn't quite as bad as the 27GL850, but with a contrast ratio below 900 to 1, black levels and contrast are still a weakness for this type of panel. In particular, you can see AU Optronics equivalent near the top of the charts in the MAG251RX, which produces a 40% higher contrast ratio, more in line with what I'd normally expect from a modern IPS. Viewing angles are very solid though, so if you're tossing up between this and a 240Hz TN panel, generally you can expect similar contrast ratios, but better viewing angles with the LG IPS option. Uniformity was also outstanding with my review model, well above average, although IPS monitors do tend to be pretty strong in this area. All up, I think the LG 27GN750 is a pretty good monitor. While I have my reservations around 1080p monitors at 27 inches in size specifically, if that's what you're after, LG is treating you to excellent performance combined with generally solid colors. I'm very happy current IPS technology allows for such a combination of super high refresh rates and a great viewing experience. A few years ago, you just wouldn't get a good experience out of a 240Hz IPS display, but now it's finally a reality. The 27GN750 provides performance just one step behind the best TNs on the market right now, easily delivering 4 millisecond response times on average, with this particular model being capable of those speeds across the entire refresh range. You can even push it faster than that at the top end, which gives a clear and responsive 240Hz experience. Given that the 27GN750 also packs in a decent color experience, especially when calibrated, along with fantastic viewing angles and uniformity, I'd much rather buy this sort of 240Hz display than a TN equivalent, even if the TN ends up 20% faster. Personally, I think that small speed trade-off is worth it when you gain a lot in the color department, especially when current pricing doesn't make the IPS version more expensive. There were some interesting findings to come out of this testing in particular. One is that while the LG 1 millisecond class IPS panel is faster than a similar offering I tested from AU Optronics, it's not that much faster. So in practice, you'll end up with a pretty similar experience, whether you go with the 27GN750 or a high quality AU Optronics alternative like the MSI MAG251RX. LG doesn't have as much of a lead in this 1080p 240Hz market as they do in the 1440p market with their flagship panel. And while performance is undoubtedly very strong here, giving us the best response times has led us to a few trade-offs. Once again, we have unimpressive contrast ratio, so the 27GN750 isn't great for those that game in dark rooms. LG has also neglected to offer backlight strobing. Both of these concerns make an alternative with the AU Optronics panel potentially a better choice. Given the 27GN750 is priced at $400, which is quite competitive with other models with similar specs, it's hard to definitively say whether you should buy this or buy something else. It really comes down to what you want, what you're after in a monitor, what you're going to do with it. If you want the best performance, get the 27GN750. If you want backlight strobing or you need better contrast or if you aren't a fan of the size, then there's a few other decent options available. I'd personally lean towards the MSI MAG251RX because it's a bit cheaper and has backlight strobing, but that recommendation might not be right for everyone. And that's it for this review of the LG 27GN750. Hope you all learned what you needed to learn about this monitor and you can now make some good decisions about buying some 240Hz 1080p displays. I actually really like this latest generation of IPS options. It's really nice that we're getting this IPS technology available to push up to those really high refresh rates. Hopefully this means that we'll get those 1440p 240Hz monitors soon, which I'm expecting to also be quite compelling for those that want a nice high-end option. 
Uh, as always, you can support us directly on Patreon if you are interested in things like our display profiles. The ICC profile that we made for this monitor is available over on there. So check the links in the description if you want to sign up to that and support us. Of course, subscribing is another great way to support us just so you can get all of our content in your inbox. And we've got this excellent new Harbor Unbox and also the Hammer Unboxed merch, uh, Hammer Unbox, I should say, merch available through the links in the description below. So yeah, definitely get this in the next two weeks before the pre-order period is over. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.